Uh, uh, just typical. These are studies from reference of uh, UFC and whatnot. Just trying to get uh, uh, awkward positions that you wouldn't necessarily see or think is like a usual uh, position, like a, a stick figure, skeleton figure drawing thing. Usually, when you work from something like that, it would be a more typical action or stance than something you would see like people all tangled up and rolling around on the ground. So sometimes, you know, I challenge myself by uh, drawing things like that and trying to draw things from different angles than you would normally see. Uh, I really like this one just because the way it flows and the action and the weight and momentum and those things I try to capture that one's obviously from reference to. But I like how smooth and how well it just fit together and I do it pretty quickly. Uh, it says 30 minutes there. And these are more from reference. Uh, I really like this one too. It really shows oh some I like action. I like the way I have these lines going in the direction of the feet sometimes. I've done that a few times now and I just really like the way it sort of makes things hectic and it sort of like helps add that action, it's like action lines to the drawing, like something's really going on. It's almost like a uh, it's like the blur, like uh, I think I started doing that from drawing things off of my television screen. Actually, when things are blurred out, it's like, well, that's an indication that that's moving fast, and so I started doing that. I don't really like that one because it just looks stiff to me, but, you know, it's sort of a study of, you know, the rib cage and whatnot. Things overlapping each other that I tend to do. And uh, as I've mentioned it before, almost everything I do, it sort of holds... I want it to hold its own weight and momentum so that you can feel the action and the movement of things. So it should really, you can almost feel the weight of the figure against the ground or the momentum that the figure is moving backwards or something, you know, like this guy is getting punched or kicked or, or whatever. <clears throat> and here's some more uh, studies, short ones. Oh, that one's really stiff and ugly. But there's another example of just weird, you know, positions. You wouldn't... See, like, if you were drawing a typical comic book, you would not uh, probably come up with something like that because you'd go, that's going to look funny when I finish drawing it. You know, no matter how much I work this thing over, it's going to look funny. So it might look wrong, like I don't know how to draw it. But when you're drawing, you know, from reference, you know, you're just studying... Uh, uh, real figures, you might want to pick out things like that because, you know, then you'll know how things look from weird angles. You know, your anatomy might be a little bit better than somebody else, you know. That's probably why I drew that. I don't know. Here's another one. I think I filmed that one. Uh, uh, so that film will be up here somewhere. Probably. I don't really enjoy it because it took me a really long time to do it because I was talking through the whole thing. And so it, it also looks fairly stiff. And I, I think I remember talking in the video about creating different levels of uh, foreground and background with different, you know, line variances and stuff like that. So it's just like a typical tip. It's not really one option of ways to do cross-hatching and stuff that isn't typically used, but I just felt like I wanted to do it in that situation to create that depth there, so I did. <clears throat> and you'll see a lot through my notebook. I just make little notes of things that I love, like line relationships and stuff. So, like, I do this a lot. Like, you'll see these, like, this little mushroom shape or this ear shape or, you know, the three lines. These things that I, that are, I repeat a lot in my artwork because they're just, they're elegant ways that lines work in nature. And I always try to, like, how do I use that? And how do I see that in, in what I'm looking at? And I really hope that these things show up well on here. These are just done in hard pencil. 
but I, sometimes I just keep them like that or I'll finish them on uh, the computer so I don't mess up what I've already got. And this one I, I started over on that because it was misproportioned or something. I'm sure I did a video for that one also. And this one. See, there it is again with the, the action of the, those lines sort of follow the, the action like it's fast moving there. I sort of like that. <coughs> and that shows really a good uh, momentum and gravity sort of going on there too. It sort of holds its own weight. It's, it's not uh, just some made up thing. And see, I like to pay attention to the lines that go through all the, somebody's whole body. It's sort of a I talk about rhythm lines a lot, but I don't talk a lot about just like how a rhythm line can sometimes be a more messy and uh, inelegant thing when you're just trying to capture like the essence of the energy of the body. So bodies in movement, in order to keep that movement on the page, you need to concentrate on sort of the the rhythm line that sort of just goes through the figure so see his figure looks a little more fluid and it shows a little more movement whereas this guy shows that gravity and you know just of his stance and, and, and everything and <clears throat> that's probably part of the reason why I drew that not to mention just the three dimensionality of uh, what I was looking at obviously I'm talking about these things that I drew from reference um, and there they are again, those basic shapes and lines that I just sort of, I'm sure I was talking about them in the video that I made this, but, uh, there are things that you can just study forever and just sort of just geek out on and they sort of teach you, you know, like this is coming towards you, this is going away, this is how lines behave and work and like Donald Duck's bill here or the hat bill or whatever, that's one of those things that just seems so elegant to me. I love it. Here's another, uh, just the, the action of it. And I almost didn't want to draw this one because it seemed too straightforward, too simple of a pose and everything, you know. Everything is so clear, like clearly the line going through this figure is like this, you know, but you know. It's grown on me. I like it now. Yeah, it, it does show like the there's that foot again with the action lines. I guess I'll call them action lines on this video, just so you know what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of cross hatching and feathering and stuff on there, and and obviously like it, the cross hatching that I'm using on some of these things may not be technically the same cross-hatching you would see other artists use but obviously I'm using those lines to emphasize the energy that's going through the figures to show the movement or to emphasize it so I'm not just using the cross-hatching as another artist might to show the mass or the weight or the volume or whatever of uh, of the figure on the page and I'm not a big fan of that anyway uh, some artists make it look cool but to me with an educated eye when I see highly like super highly rendered things with a lot of cross hatching and stuff in uh, popular comic books to me it looks like somebody just cut out a photo where somebody used that sort of light with a flat black backdrop behind the model or something to create that really light lights and really dark darks because it's not something you see in everyday life it's something that a photographer has to set up to do so when I see art that's like that I just kind of like that's what I see I see something that a photographer might have set up I don't see something that would be happening in real life so that's kind of why I don't like that particularly a lot well, I'm dwelling on uh, <laughs> barely anything on the paper for you, so.
and, and another one. I just I hope it shows you know the three dimensionality and the weight and you know this is closer to you and this is moving farther away. You know I try to keep things three dimensional as well. Or I want to be showing the gravity of how this guy is falling or stumbling backwards. You know, it's, it, the drawing should show that, but you should almost feel it too. You know, so, and that's why I did that. And here's another one of those. Uh, it's an awkward angle of a fight, and it's not something that somebody would typically, oh, I'm going to, you know, uh, do a Basima drawing, uh, how to draw comics the Marvel way type uh, thing like that, you know, with shapes. I usually think of it as shapes more like that, that somebody might draw. It's more of a, you know, like, what is this? Yeah, nonsense, you know, so it's like, I want to draw that, it looks hard to draw, and, and things like that are kind of hard to draw, because it's, you're looking at weird angles of things that you don't normally see, and so, you know, and I really like this one for that reason, and I get people on phones telling me I don't know basic anatomy, there's another one, it's just, all those overlapping uh, body parts and crazy angles and uh, you know but this is done from reference and you're gonna tell me my anatomy is off <laughs> you know I mean this was done from reference I was like my anatomy even though it might not be what you're used to seeing is anatomy that's there or even if it's not there evidently on a television screen because you know, obviously there's going to be details that I can't see from here. They are reference points that I've developed be, being able to draw, you know, the human skeleton and uh, how the muscles work around that, that foundation. And, you know, there's a little bit of shorthand going on sometimes here and there, but it's not wrong. It's just the way that I do things. It's my style. <clears throat> but yeah, I really like, I liked how that that knee and foot goes sort of backwards, but it's not backwards, but it looks backwards. I don't know, just that that whole uh, dynamic going on there of what's close to you and what's far away, and all the twisting and turning, and that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of a crappy one to leave in my sketchbook, but, you know, I filled up the sketchbook. I don't want to be tearing out everything that's half-assed, and it's just another quick uh, study I did drawn. What do you even say? I don't know what that says. And I was just, uh, that's from reference to, uh, I was just playing with, uh, oh, some, uh, refillable pens or whatever. I ink mostly on the computer anymore these days. There's another one. Just trying <clears throat> to see uh, what different sort of looks I can get using different equipment, you know. It's really weird. I, I've got to get some of my old art that I used to do when I was a teenager and uh, make a video or something one of these days because I've really like gone away from cross hatching and doing things that I used to do back then and I don't do them now and I think a lot of the stuff that I did when I was a lot younger would be more appealing to some of the uh, you know comic book fanboy type mentality artists compared to my work now and that's just some notes on uh, <clears throat> dynamics of movement and whatnot. And there's one seventeen minutes 
I guess it took me to rough that out when I did that. These are probably out of a tabloid uh, magazine. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I like to draw things out of, uh, you know, uh, the paparazzi uh, tabloid type magazines because they catch people in real life doing real things, walking and talking and laughing and and things like that, and they're not posing. And there just comes a point as an artist that you don't want to draw people posing anymore. And uh, that's a great, great source to utilize as an artist. And that's, uh, and I, bet I, I really like things that come out at you, you know, things that move forward and backwards and have the sort of like, they have the unsymmetrical shapes like the bottom of the foot too. I really liked it, like, because those are hard things for you to grasp. It's like the Donald Duck's bill thing, line, that I showed you on one of these. It's sort of like, e e sometimes it takes some concentration to, like, figure out how to do that again. Even though it's such a simple thing, sometimes you just, you have to noodle over it until you, oh, yeah, this is how it worked. Because it's like an optical illusion, and sort of, so feet, to me, are kind of like that sometimes. And then you get the just real, you know, things coming out at you and things moving away and the different bends and so you can almost think of this as like four planes you got the front part of the foot that's coming up the back part of the foot that's behind that the front part of the back foot that's down on the ground and closer to you than the back part of you know so it's very dimensional uh, some blue pencil just more sketches from uh tabloids or whatnot. Pretty ugly loose stuff there. And that one's from reference from uh, drawing UFC stuff again like usual. But another, it's just those are the awkward angles but it's got everything as far as it's got the movement, it's got the weight, it's got three dimensionality, it's got the twisting and turning and you know action reaction. One thing overlaps another thing you know you know, it, things overlap things on one body, but a, a drawing on a page looks better if, you know, one body overlaps another body. Uh, so I kind of like that one too. Except that one, I didn't spend much time trying to figure out how to draw hands on it. Which I should probably do someday, just because they look better. I like drawing hands anyway. Those were probably just out of my head doodles, I think. And uh, I've got a few studies from uh, the Body World's exhibit of human corpses and stuff. I always wanted to go do that. I've seen it a few times and finally got to bring my sketchbook down there and draw a little bit, take a few notes. I didn't get a whole lot, though. And... Um, that one, it looks like I did that one with a uh, bigger pencil or a graphite stick or something. Or maybe just a really dull pencil. But I try to keep things fairly clean, you see, because I do things in, uh, I rough them out really lightly and then darken them up and I, and I try to keep my pages real clean. And, and I just, I like that look too. But in like everything, like I was just talking about, things are overlapping and they're from odd angles, but the anatomy is there and it's correct, and this is from reference. That's how I know the anatomy is correct in there. It's not something I made up, you know, and I can still put the uh, foundation underneath it and the muscles going, you know, being used by that foundation and the way that they're being used, it, it all works. But I got, you know, things coming in front of other things, and there's a nice dynamic hand, and I just love drawing hands. They're so multi-dimensional and, and stuff themselves. Uh, there's another crappy one I should just tear out of here. I thought I did. Oh, yeah, I had notes on the back, that's why. I hope you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. 
light pencil. I think sometimes it's easier to see that in the dark than it is in the light. It's one of those oddball things about choosing the pencil you want to use when you're drawing something. The pencil depends on the light and it also depends on the paper you're using. So if you're in a bright, bright sunlight or something and Ani, shut up! then you might not want to use a really hard pencil thinking I'll be able to see this because it's such bright light when it's actually easier to see it when it's darker. <laughs> so, but that's one example of that. And that's why I really like, you know, I tried a few times to get this drawing and I never really did pull it off, but I really liked the, like I say, the lines that go through the figures, and that's why I made these notes. I'm like, I really like how this turns this way, and there's these general lines that go through this sort of thing, just the action of it, and, and the twists and turns and overlap, and it just flowed together so well. It's just, uh, it's from the Chris Lieb and Michael Bisming fight. And that's the one I ended on, and I still, I don't even really like it, and it's unfinished, but <laughs> I was tired of geeking out on that. And, well, that one looks like refer from reference too, but it's fairly crappy. And yeah, that hands don't look from like they're from reference, so I don't know what the heck that is. But, mm, there's Ghost Rider. I like Tron Ghost Rider all right, but uh, I've had this critiqued before by professionals and uh, they talk about they don't like how I drew the leather and whatnot, like he's <laughs> not even, you know, wearing anything, but you can see uh, Mark Tejara's Ghost Rider too. You see every muscle and see his rib muscles and all this stuff through the jacket and so like that's Ghost Rider to me. <laughs> like, you know, he is a superhero. So I, I always kind of try to develop a, and I've been drawing his leather differently lately, but I try to develop sort of like a half and half look of what parts of him wearing a leather jacket I want to keep and basically be able to use as a something for the light to bounce off of to make it look dynamic because he's always got this constant light source on his head, you know? Anyway, enough of that. And, and of course, that wasn't from any reference that was out of my head. These are all just out of my head doodles. I think that was probably from reference, but, you know, who cares? It's just uh, studies. There's Donald Duck's bill again. And there's some more ugly studies I did. And those are obviously out of my head. But I... You know, it's hard to find... Hard not to doodle sometimes as an artist. You need to just, like, not think too hard about what you're drawing and draw for fun. And so usually you'll get things like faces and weird styles and things like that. That's yeah, just some goofball stuff, but makes me think of uh, covers to like old spy books or something like that. I think I was thinking of the Ols. I want to learn to draw horses, and I would really like to find reference of. Uh, high-speed photography catching horses coming around barrels and barrel racing. That stuff is awesome, but I have yet to find something like that to learn how to draw dynamic horses. There's some more ugly studies. There's just more doodles out of my head, drawing different uh, face shapes and stuff. And there's some more loose sketches and 
things that I never bothered finishing. I'm sure they're all out of my head. I draw out of my head a lot, actually, even though most of this has been from reference. There's another uh, 4H lead one that I never finished, but I really like that one. I think I might have finished that one on my computer. Anyway, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that one or not. So see, there's like some good looking ones and there's a lot of ugly ones, but I left them in here anyway. <laughs> you know, there's, although it may not be something you want to hang on a museum wall, there might be little things like little notes, like how that forearm looks that looks cool to you, so you just want to keep it and for yourself to learn, you know. There's another uh, 4-H thing that I never finished. And I'm sure that one probably took me about three minutes to do. Who knows? It doesn't look like that one took me very long. I'm playing around with them pens again. Well, there's another 4-H thing. I never finished, but I liked it. So. That's ugly, you know, but it's my sketchbook, so I can have some ugly pages in there if I want to, but, you know, the things that makes me think, like this head sort of, makes me think of, uh, oh, like J.C. Landecker or something like that, you know, it's just like, it's almost too elegant in, in some places. I don't think you would do a head quite that shaped, but uh, some of the, uh, uh, oversimplified, elegant uh, lines and uh, sort of sh shortcut type lines there. It looks really elegant. And, uh, yeah, that one's really bare bones looking, isn't it? But that's mostly there. It's another old awkward one that looks almost uh, more symbolic than it does like uh, it was from a real uh, image. Almost too clean, but and I think that's why I drew it, just because it looks crazy to me. Uh, that's a photo of someone uh, who posted their this photo on their uh, Facebook or something, so I just liked the photo and figured I'd draw it. But uh, I was playing around with mechanical pencils there. I don't usually use mechanical pencils. I don't like drawing uh, with pencils that I can't use the edge of the pencil with. And uh, I like line variation, but I just I thought I'd get the most out of the crinkly uh, clothing and, and things like that using the mechanical pencil. So that's the way I did that. Oh, yeah, that's an ugly page, but I like the feet. <laughs> uh, there's another 4-H study. I think I finished this one on the Internet and inked it on the Internet and stuff. There's another study of the same thing. There's a finished one. I like simplicity. <clears throat> and uh, some people might want to look at it and say that that's wrong because it doesn't look like uh, something Bern Hogarth would do or something that uh, Bridgman would do or something that Jim Lee would do. Or it doesn't have, you know, cylinders and block shapes in it, you know, things like that. But the human body is fluid and uh, I study the elegance of lines and how things work and, and just because it's simple 
and it looks oversimplified doesn't mean that it doesn't work with a foundation that's realistic or it doesn't flow like things really do flow and it doesn't hold weight and show movement in these sort of things and uh, I've always been enamored with uh, comic book art not just for the technical ability of, of the artists to render realistic things and stuff but to show things in symbol like if you really study comic book art it's about creating symbols for things it's about being able, able to boil things down into symbols that are recognizable to just tell you flat out what's there without you having to interpret it too much and uh, on the other side of that coin is sometimes making people look at something like oh I've never seen it done that way before and it catches your eye because it is different and I don't know it's sort of you get the best of both worlds and uh, yeah I just I love uh, comic book art and there's another uh, study from reference from a flight I can't remember I think I might have did a video of this one, but as you can see, I run it off the paper and everything. And there's another one, and this one looks fairly clean. And I inked this one on the internet or on the on my computer, and uh, <laughs> I had to make this note here just because I like like you look at it and something looks wrong about this. Like you might think, oh, that ain't the leg is shaped all funny, you know, and just like look at that outline of the leg, but it's actually correct, and that's like how it actually looked, but you're not used to seeing a leg at this weird angle and the momentum of it, and what's happening is basically this guy's leg is bent moving away from you and then coming back towards you, and the muscle on his leg is, is being flexed at one point and bouncing at another like his calf is actually bouncing up with the momentum of you know it's going up and uh, rolling around the bones in his in his leg as he impacts this guy's leg so it, when you're looking at it still and not in movement it looks funny it's like that ain't how my leg is supposed to look but you know you think about it and, and I always I try to capture things like that so I like it and it might look wrong to somebody else but that's another one of those instances where if somebody looks at it and says oh that's wrong that doesn't look right Jim Lee would say you draw a cylinder right here or something you know and and a baseball for the knee and you know, whatever but it's like no <laughs> you know that's not what I would do this is what I would do and somebody else might be able to catch that and say oh wow that's cool how that figure looks so fluid and how the leg is bouncing there you know it might take an educated eye to see that but you know I think that's cool uh, some more blue pencil these are just some doodles I did from my head and I was having a hard time figuring out how to uh, draw somebody doing dips Another thing from my head. Boy, that just really doesn't look very good after looking at these things done from reference. But, you know, it was just sort of a thing that was on my mind and I drew it. Sort of a preliminary, I guess. A lot of stuff in my sketchbook I do is uh, preliminary things for ideas that I have that I actually want to put on like a sequential page and then I never get around to or whatever. So. And there's another thing that... Uh, done in 4-H so I don't know how well you can see it but I finished that on the computer and inked it and actually turned it into sort of a Tarzan like thing but it's another one of those it's a crazy angle a crazy upshot that you would normally never see anybody and then you got the twisting and turning of you know where you can see his back and his upper body and it although it probably isn't very real 
realistic. It's so exaggerated. But it's realistic enough to look cool, <laughs> you know. So that's why I did that. And, uh, yeah, I like to make things be foreshortened and whatnot where you got the arm that's going away from you at the elbow there. So it's shortened and then the other arm is stretched and you just you get the contrast of things twisting and turning and going away from you and coming towards you yeah and there's an ugly sketch that I just did the other day because it was some unfinished thing that I didn't want in my sketchbook and I just figured ah screw it I'll draw over it and see what I come up with and I still come up with this ugly thing with like a fist shape and head <laughs> There's another uh, doodle out of my head that I finished on the computer and definitely doesn't look like the same style and as uh, a lot of other things. It's just not as elegant. And more of a what I would call my cartoony style. But like I say, I, I kind of like, enjoy that because it's uh, symbolic, you know. It's, it's uh, boiling things down to being recognizable and maybe portraying certain uh, styles over like realism <clears throat> there's Punisher love that guy another doodle and sequential notes sequential notes there's some more cartoony looking crap but I just I think I felt like drawing something that day and that's what came out <laughs> <laughs> and it looks kind of silly and flat and goofy, but I don't know. I like to draw goofy looking things sometimes. And these are more from a reference. Something's happening. She's not posing. She's clapping and happy or surprised. And that's why I drew it. And these are just doodles. Noodles. And more doodles. I was having fun that day. Goofing around with drawing uh, the Hulk. It was really fun to draw if you know a little bit of anatomy because he's uh... It's more like you're drawing a toy. You're creating uh, proportions that are unrealistic. And then you build the figure around it. So kind of fun. More doodles out of my head playing around with people's heads and faces. There's another, uh, that's out of my head too, but uh, I didn't really enjoy it so I didn't finish it. Check it out, it's the gun brandisher. Doodles, doodles, doodles. There's another fairly recent thing I drew. This one was actually from a picture off of the internet, but uh, I liked the way that the knees looked and the way that the feet worked and stuff, you know, with the twisting and turning and the, the angles and whatnot. And, and uh, those three shadows are actually look pretty much like that in the, the photo, and I just I wanted to capture that as notes. To myself, uh, stuff that looks cool. Uh, yeah. And of course, I get criticism that says uh, it looks wrong. But you know what? It's a sketchbook sketch, and I like it. This one uh, I actually drew out of my head. That one isn't from reference, and it's not super uh, cartoony, but. I like it. Uh, 
And I drew that one out of my head too, and it didn't take me very long. But yeah, and it's like like little things that I don't know if everybody picks up on, but uh, you know, I like uh, the mechanics of people fighting and, and things like that, and, and knowing a little bit about it, I put things down that might look wrong or some other artist might like oh I would draw the foot at this angle I would do it this way but to me it's like a, you know if you're throwing a left hook that foot's going to be turned in so they can have some power in that punch and stuff so it's like I'll uh, do things like that and I, I think like that's what makes the drawing cool is like little detail like that whereas another artist would say well everything looks good except I would draw the foot at a different angle. It doesn't look right at that angle. So what they don't realize is it doesn't look right because you're not used to seeing it. <laughs> or, you know, you miss things that are in movement because our brains don't take snapshots when they see something moving. Our, but we'll s sit there and stare all day at something that's standing still and, like, draw it and say, oh, it looks like that. That's how it should look. But uh, if you could take a photograph of things in action and you realize that they aren't, uh, you know, at these easy angles and they just look perfect for, for you. There's that creepy eye. And people posing. I don't know why I like it. Gotta draw people posing. I just did it to do it. Like, it's been so long since I've drawn somebody posing, like, all superhero-esque, and so I just did that and I did that and it's just standing there posing looks cool I like the drawing but it's not typical of me because I don't want to draw a superhero standing there you know I want to draw action I want to draw things happening I want to weight and momentum and three-dimensionality and action and you know so but I can do it can I And there's some more cartoony stuff and doodles. I think I was just playing around with drawing those weird squiggly lines. I'll start with a weird squiggly line and I'll try to sort of build a figure around that line that's doing something from weird angles and, you know, just sort of pick the drawing out of the scribbles, you know, just like you do to draw, to doodle a face. It's always easy to make a face out of anything. Well, for me, I'll throw a scribble down and it's like that scribble is the energy of the body and movement and I'll figure out how to make build a body around it and so that's what those are and that one was out of my head too and, and that's another example of what I was just talking about the foot being turned all goofy looking and I have things stretched out you know with like the whole squash and stretch thing I tried to like stretch this out as much as I could to show the stretch there and this is sort of that's how Boss Rutten throws a kick so that's why I drew that and it's sort of my uh, notes of this is the technique of how to throw a kick so it looks goofy to somebody who isn't in the know but to me uh, it's like yeah that's kind of like my symbol of this technique and it's memorable to me because because it is goofy looking. That's what makes it memorable. It's like, oh, remember that weird looking goofy silhouette of that. You'll remember it because it's goofy looking. If it looked perfect, it wouldn't be memorable. And also it sort of illustrates the point. Like I talk about in a drawing the human figure, a lot of times you'll notice that like a line will match another line like the angle that your leg is at will be the same angle that the for your forearm is at and then your other you know forearm or something will be at that other angle of the other leg and you can find those things that match up because the human body just it counterbalances like that and if you learn to look for that you can actually pull together a drawing easier than when you're experimenting oh I need to draw the leg a little more over here oh and then I'll inch it over and I'll make the leg a little more over here and an amateur artist will keep stumbling around redrawing a leg in different positions and not know what looks right when if they knew all along that oh well this leg is would look best right here because that's the angle that the arm is going in 
<laughs> we naturally move in that way, like things match up that way. Well, in this case, these feet, although they're not in perfect angle, but this foot and this foot are sort of at the same angle. Why? Because he's throwing a kick in, in that direction. Like the power from this kick is moving towards this foot, where this foot is pointed, is actually like over here, you know. So that's that silhouette there. The foot's pointed that way, so it matches that foot. And it looks awkward and goofy, but I did it for a reason. And there's another uh, Ghost Rider thing I drew from my head. No reference there, but that's the type of thing you can do when you, you study uh, anatomy and twisting and turning and making things dynamic and being aware of weight and momentum and just things like that. You can pull things like this out of your head and say like, oh, I want him twisting this way and turning like this and I want to show like the tension that he's doing this and you know, like, so like that to me is like, I just, I made this as three dimensional as I could, different at odd angles, you know, and was able to pull it off rather than doing something that's so boiled down and simple. Uh, like that. Anyway. And that's 